well, thank you very much for the uh, introduction. So, uh, well, in this particular study, we were mainly interested in a disease which is uh, known as keratoconus. And in keratoconus, um, uh, or ke um, keratoconus is actually related to uh, progressive cornea thinning and uh, deformation, and it can lead even like to this very strong deformations and like a strong outbulging of the cornea, and uh, you can easily imagine that this can lead to an impaired vision. And it is actually the most common cornea uh, dystrophy in humans, and one out of 2,000 patients suffering from this disease. And uh, the early diagnosis of this disease is uh, very important in order to prevent uh, surgeries and treatment planning. And the common way uh, to uh, diagnose this disease is by measuring uh, the cornea thickness or by measuring um, the thickness of different layers of the cornea. And the standard devices that are used um, for, uh, um, uh, for that is, um, one of them is uh, anterior segment um, optical current uh, tomography. And in the previous studies, we used um, the so-called RTView device, which is an 830 nanometer uh, spectral uh, domain uh, OCT. And you can see like so this is the device, and you can see that you can very nicely measure uh, the thickness of the cornea or even like the thickness of different uh, layers within the cornea. Well, and uh, another approach that is used in order to uh, measure uh, the thickness of the cornea or different layers is a high frequency ultrasound. And in our previous studies, we used the so-called uh, Artemis ultrasound device. Uh, it uses a 40 megahertz uh, ultrasound transducers and the RF data are digitized at about 500 megahertz with a resolution of uh, 8 bit. And uh, the specialty of this device is it uses some sort of like a arc scan in order to maintain the uh, normality of the incidence of the ultrasound um, beam and uh, also to uh, maintain a constant uh, distance between uh, the cornea and the ultrasound uh, transducer. Well, and, um, and everything is like also controlled by camera and the uh, fixation uh, light. Well, and by just conducting several of these uh, art scans, uh, you can like you see you can measure the thickness from these measurements, and then you can derive even two-dimensional maps uh, of the distribution of the cornea or of uh, uh, different layers. So in this um, previous studies of about two hundred patients. Uh, we measured the thickness of the epithelium, which is the first layer on top of the uh, cornea. I'm going to explain this a little bit more in the next slide. When these uh, maps show like the two dimensional maps of uh, the epithelium thickness, and you can very nicely see that it is um, very highly correlated with um, the, with the severity trait of uh, keratoconus, uh, with a very thin. Uh, epithelium uh, or the very high grade of uh, keratoconus. However, as I already like mentioned, the cornea is, uh, as we consider as a layer uh, structure, consisting of uh, the epithelium, uh, like a Bowman's layer, and um, the largest uh, layer is uh, the so-called stroma, and then the back we have the top of the three-dimensional membrane and uh, epithelium. Well, and these different layers actually consist of uh, different structures and materials. So, for example, the epithelium mainly consists of uh, soft epithelial cells, whereas the stroma mainly consists of collagen uh, fibers. So, but in order to measure the thickness uh, using ultrasound, um, of course, we need the speed of sound. But well, the speed of sound for the individual layers uh, is actually unknown so far. And therefore, in uh, all the previous studies, the measure of thickness using ultrasound, or like a fixed speed of sound, was assumed of uh, 1,536 uh, meters per second. Well, and indeed, interestingly, when um, uh, we compared the results of the high frequency ultrasound measurements with the measurements from the OCT, uh, we could see. 
see that there is uh, indeed like um, a constant uh, change or difference between uh, the thickness measurements of uh, ultrasound and uh, OCT. And the difference is about one uh, micrometer in uh, average. Well, and uh, there is like uh, several assumptions um, uh, made and one probably uh, is related to uh, the, the constant speed of sound uh, assumption in the um, uh, cornea and um, um, the epithelium layer. Well, and uh, to further study this uh, in the first place uh, and to get the material properties of uh, uh, the different layers, we conducted some similar sim simulations. We just modeled the cornea as a three-layer structure with epithelium, Bowman, membrane, and stroma. And uh, we um, model like them as um, reflective uh, layers with different acoustic and healing. And we then iteratively change the thickness of, the, uh, of these layers and the material properties uh, for these uh, simulations. And then we just summed up all uh, the reflected signals from each of these uh, layers in order to generate a, a simulated um, signal. And the signal that gets reflected was uh, obtained from a, a glass plate uh, signal. Well, by varying the, the parameters of each of these uh, layers and then correlating it with um, the actual measured uh, signal, then we could uh, derive the material properties such as the acoustic impedance of each of these uh, layers. Well, but we also wanted to empirically uh, study like uh, the speed of sound of each of these uh, studies and uh, of each of these layers. Well, and the only method that can really derive um, these properties in, um, um, in sufficient resolutions is quantitative acoustic uh, microscopy. Uh, we conducted uh, some studies at uh, thick eyes and in total of the studies, we had like about uh, nine thick eyes. Uh, the results are 100% curious uh, obtained from two of these uh, uh, samples. And um, the thick eyes were embedded in uh, OCT and then snap frozen, and we took prior sections of these eyes with thicknesses of about uh, 12 micrometers. And uh, the, the sections were directly taken at the central axis of the uh, eyes, and before we uh, measured the corneas, um, we put them in uh, saline in order to guarantee um, that they rehydrate. Well, and this is the acoustic microscope system uh, that we use. There's going to be like a couple of talks this afternoon explaining it a little bit more in detail. Well, so in principle, the slides with the samples are attached to this uh, uh, two-dimensional scanning stage over here. And we are measuring like in a so-called upside down configuration. So the samples are attached to this glass plate are facing down and you go from underneath with the uh, ultrasound trans uh, transducer and then by this way we can scan uh, the samples and derive thickness uh, at each location. So we use the 300 megahertz uh, pulser from GS Ondas and we scan with a step size of uh, two micrometers. Well, and uh, we digitize this at a 12 bit resolution at 0.5 units per sample frequency. Well, and this is a ultrasound uh, transducer provided by the Fraunhofer Institute uh, in Germany. And it's a 250 megahertz single element uh, transducer with a, a sapphire lens providing a very large bandwidth, which is important in order to measure the speed of sound in these uh, signals. And it's also like a very highly focused uh, ultrasound transducer. So the beam width at the focus position is about uh, seven micrometer, uh, which gives like the, the lateral resolution of uh, the device. However, it has a large, relatively large uh, depth of field, which allows us to measure the relatively thick sections of 12 microns with very high resolution. And uh, this is just the, um, the glass plate uh, uh, system. and uh, the power spectrum. Well, and uh, these were the first results. So these are two-dimensional property maps uh, that we are measured with this, uh, uh, our acoustic uh, microscope. So we can derive um, uh, maps of material properties uh, of 
uh, assisting students at the new Asian, but the most important for the study was uh, the speaker sound, and you see this is the outer side of the, the eye, and this is the inner side, like the vitreous body of the eye, and you can clearly see already here, there's a difference in the speed of sound of the uh, epithelium and uh, stroma. Well, uh, we're showing uh, lower ways the speed of sound is in the uh, epithelium. Interestingly, the acoustic students will not that the difference between uh, these two layers. Well, and these are the, the results and numbers of the two samples uh, we measured. So it looks like the, the speed of sound in the epithelium was about 1540 meters per second, and the stroma was uh, almost uh, 1600. Well, however, the measurements that were taken here were like uh, at room temperature. However, um, the Artemis scans were taken at a body temperature. So in order to uh, account for this, we just corrected the speed of sound radius, and what we uh, get is about 1570 meters per second for the epithelium, and for the stroma, 1620 meters per second. And you see, this is quite a difference from the overall speed of sound assumption of uh, 1640 meters per second. Well, and if we compare this to like some regression analysis and some simulations where we took in this previous study, we see that we're quite close uh, to these values. And if we use you know, these values that we obtained here from acoustic microscopy, uh, so these are the results before from the high frequency ultrasound measurements showing higher thicknesses to get to the OCT measurements by using these mean values, we see that these values are corrected and uh, there's no significant difference anymore between uh, the those measurements. Uh, so to summarize, um, actually this is um, the best of our knowledge, is the first study that actually provides speed of sound values separately for different layers of the cornea. So there are literature uh, values and studies that have been conducted to measure speed of sound of the cornea, but they only provided like an overall speed of sound of the entire cornea. So what we found here, what our initial data suggests is that the speed of sound in the epithelium is smaller than the speed of sound uh, in the, the stroma, and actually these results can explain the differences that we found in this, uh, previous studies uh, showing the difference between high frequency and OCT measurements. So, well, of course, uh, future work would be to evaluate um, much more samples. So right now, uh, we only have uh, two samples, but the others uh, um, are under investigation. And of course, we want to conduct also experiments on uh, human eyes in order to uh, verify these results. And uh, one goal would be also like to use uh, finer resolutions that would also allow us to resolve uh, finer structures such as the Bowman's membrane. Now, in this way, like some results, because we have also like a 500 megahertz uh, transducer, and it's just the measurements taken at the human optic nerve, and the 500 megahertz. We can even like uh, resolve very fine structures uh, of the retina. Here we have like the rods and cones are almost uh, visible. But thank you very much for your attention.